Hello out there. I was getting um, actually a few messages over the last weeks where people were asking me if I offer online courses or classes about food styling and um, food photography. And I don't. And I'm not planning on doing that properly because I, I wouldn't know where to start. Um, but I thought I could do a screen grab and then later on add some stream of consciousness commentary. Because I remember that when I started out, I actually um, wanted to soak up as much information about um, food styling and food photography as I could get. So I hope that this is maybe of use to you. And there is some information in there that you didn't hear anywhere else. And that um, helps you, you know, develop your own style and get better at your craft, so to say. So, um, let's start by adjusting um, the wooden floorboards or wooden boards. I prefer using really wooden boards as backdrops. I rarely use uh, printed um, backdrops because I... Um, like how the wood changes and how the imperfections change, you know, and the splotches. I enjoy that. So that's my personal preference. But since uh, dust clinges really well to wood, I recommend um, cleaning it up with a handheld vacuum cleaner before you start. You will save yourself a lot of time in Photoshop later on. Because with a high-resolution camera, you will see a lot of the dust, actually. Here I was thinking about uh, using two balls for a second, but um, didn't go for it. Because it looks much um, calmer and more focused with just one ball. But the ball was too small, so I added a plate. Um, the plate has um, not only black, but also hues of blue. And if you look closely, the background does as well, hues of blue and green. And those colors are actually opposite orange and the color wheel. So they um, bring out the color of the curry nicely. Um, I was thinking about using a toy coise cloth for the same reason. But it was somehow way too screamy. Um, and so I didn't use it. I recommend um, thinking about your um, color palette, um, your color scheme before you start. If you're um, new to this, um, you can read up on it. And you can also um, Google color palettes. So if you say, if you think on curry, it's orange, just Google color palette, color scheme, orange, and see what, um, what comes up. This is usually um, helpful. Here I was trying to, you know, drop the parsley, and I hoped that it would fall accidentally gorgeous, but it didn't. Sometimes that happens. <laughs> and, um, but it's not really a problem, so I ended up styling the sprigs. If you um, do some garnish uh, on one side, like I did, it's important to um, have the plate a little bit off-center. Um, that kind of balances the picture. Also, I recommend, if it's just one plate, having it a little bit above the middle of the picture. Um, and I recommend you actually try that. If you um, position the plate below um, the middle of the picture, then the whole um, picture feels a lot heavier. While if you position it slightly above the middle of the picture, then the picture feels a lot lighter and um, not as heavy. So this is coconut rice. Um, actually, all of this is not my recipe. It's a commissioned work for a client. I got the recipe and I followed the instructions, more or less, where I changed something, I will let you know. But so far, this is just rice, plain white rice, cooked in coconut milk with a bit of water and a dash of salt. That's it. 
it's creamy, it's nice, it's a bit exotic, so really nice. Um, I just um, styled about a third of the bowl, the rice, so that it looks nice and fluffy. And um, I used a lot of the rice for the other bowl to fill it up. The bowl was actually pretty deep, you can't tell here. And um, I would have um, needed a lot of curry to fill it up, so I kind of um, used the, the rice as a filler. If you have that problem, if you want to use a bowl and it's too deep, you can um, also use glass pebbles, the ones that are meant to be um, decoration for tables. Or you can um, try to find a plate that is just big enough to be like um, a second floor <laughs> inside the bowl and use that. I tried to use uh, raw broccoli as a, um, a decoration on the side. I didn't like it, so I, it didn't stay. And there are turkey meatballs in the curry. And they are actually flavored with lem lemon scent. So, um, of course, I had to use <laughs> lemon zest. Because um, I just love those adorable little yellow curls. If you want them even curlier, you can prep them one or two hours before the shoot because if they dry out slightly, they curl up even more. That depends on your personal preference. You can see that I um, have a bowl um, ready with um, lots of different herbs and edible flowers. I picked those um, right before I started um, the styling in my garden so that they are really fresh. If you have to um, keep them fresh for a while, you can put them in a bowl with ice water or um, in some kind of um, a cloth that is actually uh, moist and uh, keep them inside the fridge. But since it's summer and everything is growing outside, I just prefer to, you know, get out and pick some fresh ones. Yeah, speaking of um, the composition of the picture, the background is actually following the rule of thirds. There is, um, you know, on the left there is a one third, the, um, on the right the part is actually two thirds, and there are a lot of books on how to compose a picture, how to use color and line and ribbon and lighting, and I um, recommend you read a lot of that. And if you don't like reading as much, there is a lot of um, there are a lot of tutorials on YouTube. I recommend um, the Bite Shot channel. Um, it's a really nice YouTube channel where a lot of the technicalities of food photography are explained in a really structured way and not as stream of consciousness as I am doing it here. Okay, so since this is broccoli curry and most of you probably know that broccoli does not keep up well in a curry and um, it doesn't keep its form and it doesn't keep the color. Um, this is a problem for the picture because the viewer cannot tell what's in the curry actually. So either you use a raw curry outside the bowl as a symbol um, or as I did here you can um, take a few broccoli um, florets and then put them in boiling water for about three minutes or four and then um, put them in a bowl with ice cubes and water and they um, will keep up the color really nicely then. So when you add them to the curry you uh, viewer can immediately tell this is very obviously broccoli curry because there is broccoli in it. If you, oh yeah, I was taking the first picture there. I recommend taking a picture after every major styling step because if there, you know, is some mishap or you add too much of something or an egg yolk is a runny but not in a good way, then you can always use an earlier version or parts of an earlier version 
and fix it in Photoshop and the shoot is not completely, you know, wasted. So, those are the meatballs. This is actually the second part where I deviated a bit from the recipe I got from a client. Um, firstly, I added a few, you know, broccoli uh, florets extra, and then the recipe called for uh, the minced um, turkey meat to be seasoned and formed into little balls and then browned in a pan um, with oil and after that as a second step the um, balls should be added to um, the curry and simmered for you know 10 to 15 minutes as a recipe that is um, perfectly um, sensible because um, the meatballs get even juicier and the flavor of the curry kind of infuses the meatballs so that is a good thing to do but um, for the picture it's um, actually it does not make a lot of sense because the meatballs get yellowish and are not you know as easily recognizable as meatballs and also you um, lose the information that they are actually browned. So the brown crispiness of the meatball tells you something about the flavor of the meatball. Because meatballs that are not brown but only cooked taste completely different. So I decided to uh, skip the simmering part. Because the creaminess of the curry is obvious. And it's obvious that the... Uh, that the meatballs are part of the curry but I wanted to keep the information for the viewer that um, they are actually crispy and brown and nice. Now I'm adding a little bit of curry powder for visual interest and color and also because it's you know the main tasty ingredient, the main spice. Um, you probably see that I added three meatballs and um, with a lot of um, other elements of the photo I am working with um, uneven numbers as well. Um, there is also a lot you can read up uh, about on that topic. I used cornflower um, petals because um, again those are opposite in the color wheel of the um, orange and yellow hues and they um, help bring out uh, the color of the curry. Whereas with the, you know, with the pink and the yellow, um, that is a, a color combination that is um, easily recognizable as Indian. It's often used there. So that is something that is a, a good go-to for curries. Now I am um, um, actually deciding that I would like uh, the middle meatball to be my hero. I'm checking up, um, seeing if the focus is perfect. I would recommend that you zoom in for that, like I do. Also, I recommend that you um, take a few pictures um, with different um, apaches and um, check if the depth of field is where it should be. Is everything that is important to the dish sharp? Is everything um, clearly visible? And also, is everything that is not important um, not as sharp, not um, as in focus? So, um, is it kind of comfortable and easy for your viewer to see, um, to follow your guidance in the picture and to see what is important and what is not. As a food stylist and as a food photographer, I think it's um, it's the main job is to, yes, make the dish um, look nice. This is just um, plain tap water in a spritz bottle. I like um, spritzing a bit of uh, water on my dishes in the end, on some dishes because I think it makes um, the meat more um, juicy 
Um, it makes the curry a bit more shiny. Some food photographers and stylists prefer brushing oil. Um, and um, I think water works just well. Those little squeeze bottles are something that I totally recommend. Um, you have in different sizes. Um, because I think that um, adding cream or sauces to a dish um, is a lot easier and much more precise with those bottles compared to a spoon, for example. Also, they are dishwasher safe, so if you're done with the work, just pop them in a the dishwasher and you're done. So, in, when you're done styling and you're happy with your dish, um, as I said, I recommend you um, take a few um, different pictures um, with slightly varying apertures. Um, if you are, you know, an experienced photographer, you probably um, don't have to do that, but if you're starting out, I recommend it. So now we are in Lightroom. I um, use the camera, uh, Canon software for capturing my pictures in RAW. Then I import them to Lightroom. I do my color correction here. I prefer to do it in Lightroom. Most of my clients uh, want to get their pictures as JPEGs, so I do my color correction here. Then I retouch the JPEGs, and that's what I deliver to my clients. If you are starting out with food photography, I recommend asking your clients about their preferences. Because it's not um, not every client um, wants to have um, JPEGs. So I am not sure why Lightroom um, jumps around like crazy when you do the importing, but it does. So this is the picture straight out of the camera. You can see I um, actually yeah, took a few different versions and now I'm going to start to um, do the color correction. Yeah, this is me thinking about do I really like the cream on top or not. <laughs> I once got good advice from an old um, photographer. He told me that if you can't decide which picture is the one, then just step away for a, a day or two, and after that it will be completely clear. It's just that sometimes you are too close and too invested in your pictures, and you can't see them, you know, for what they are. And that is really good advice. So, especially if you're starting out, when you're not sure, you know, Leave it be for a day or two, give it some time, then come back to it. So what I usually do with my pictures is um, I tend to, you know, tone down the lights a bit, like here, the cream and the rice. Um, I open up um, the darker bits, the, the shadows. I sharpen it a bit, not too much. I usually add a bit of contrast and I correct um, the picture a tad uh, cooler than my camera takes the pictures. Um, sometimes I add a touch of a vignette, but not really as often. And that is basically what I do here. I don't. Um, I don't do a lot of. Um, a lot of correction. I don't, um, I don't like spending too much time in front of the screen. So I try to, um, you know, cook and prep and style, and take the picture as um, 
as close to um, usable as I can get. And then add the Mac just for finishing touches. So I renamed the files. I recommend you do it and you um, I recommend you include the date, the name, the name of the client, the name of the project and or the dish and some kind of file numbering. Because if you work as a professional photographer, you will have clients coming back after five years asking you for that one picture that they loved so much <laughs> and lost. And if you don't um, name your files in a sensible way, you will spend a lot of time in your archive digging through files. So, there we are. Um, importing the GPEG version that I just exported. Synchronizing. It's the right word. And then we're going to open it in Photoshop. Yeah, here I am thinking again, do I like the cream or not? <laughs> so now we're going to open it in Photoshop. And here I am just doing a bit of touch up. Since I like, you know, the unevenness of the wooden boards, that's why I used them in the first place. I don't do much. If there are some um, parts that are a distraction from the dish, I clean them up. Like there are some paint stains, I think. Um, what I do as well is if there are um, some some dusty bits um, on the plate or like in this case there were a few particles of curry powder I clean that up um, but that's just about everything I do I mean, there are cases when something goes wrong and you have to take two different versions of the picture and merge it into one. Then I spend a little more time with the picture. But usually I am done fairly quickly. I think it's kind of a personal um, honor thing that I want my, my food, my recipes to be, you know, real. There is no, um, there is nothing going on in my pictures or in my um, retouching that you um, that you couldn't do um, at home. So if um, if I come up with a, a recipe for a client of mine or take a picture from their recipe, then I try to you know be kind of as honest as possible with the picture and I consider you know adding adding garnishes is okay and um, changing changing some parts of the preparations a bit to you know accommodate food photography a bit more but in general it should be something that is um, accessible so if you took that recipe and made that dish um, at home, um, it should be something that could be reproduced and not, you don't need a bottle of, um, I don't know, kind of um, spray color <laughs> or some plastic bits. It's just food. So I was um, also adding a bit of light there to the meatballs um, and to the flour just to make um, their colors pop a bit more, but that was just a bit. So there, there I am thinking again, do I really like the cream or not? 
I decided that I like the version with the creamy bits better. So I saved it. And then I am nearly done. I usually um, export a, a smaller version for my clients. Um, it's ready to use for Instagram, for example, um, so that they don't have to, you know, um, resize the files. And that's it. They get usually two versions of this, plus the recipe. If the recipe is uh, one that I developed for them, then it's uh, they get the recipe, the print ready version, the big one, and the small version where they um, can that they can actually use for social media, or you know the newsletter, the website, whatever. So this is the finished picture. From the moment I uh, put the plate on the on the wooden board to the finished picture, it was about 20 minutes. I changed the speed of the video a bit. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this and I really hope that um, it was informative and it may help you a bit with your own food photography and styling. Um, if you have any questions, you can let me know. Maybe. I will do another video if it um, you know fits with some food that I am um, taking pictures of and thanks for sticking around. <laughs>